So, you need to get an image of your current hard drive or your operating system as it currently stands. And you want to be able to restore that. You can do this backup by running Drive Image XML by Runtime Software. You can backup, you can also browse those images and restore certain files from them, or you can restore the entire image file. Uh, you can also move the entire image from one drive to another. Uh, you can also set it up to automatically run in the background using Task Manager or Task Scheduler. The neat thing about Drive Image XML is that you can do a hot image of your operating system while you're using it, so you don't have to dedicate time just for your PC to run this. Uh, that's done using Microsoft's Volume Shadow Services. You can then restore that image using the Drive Image XML program from the BART PE CD. BART PE is a whole video within itself, so we'll cover that another time. Today we we're going to basically cover running a backup and restoring those files, or even restoring the image. So for starters, we're going to come up and click the backup link. The screen will give us some basic information about the drive that it locates. It's located in my C drive. It's an NTFS drive. Uh, 233 gigabytes worth of usable capacity, 70% used. Also gives a physical drive ID. There's some other information here if you care um, about the sectors and use bytes, that kind of stuff. You may want to pay attention to the text on the left hand side in the back in the backup block. Uh, that gives you a quick explanation that there are two files that will create. One is an XML file, the other one is a .dat file. Uh, the XML file contains the drive description, and the .dat file actually contains the image drive's data. So we're going to come down, we're going to click on Next, I select our drive, click Next. And this will tell us that it's going to stick the image in the My Documents folder. It's going to tell you the drive that's going to name it, Drive C. You notice there's two modes there, one's raw mode, the other is uh, split large files. We're going to leave split large files and set my compression to good to try to save some space. If you select raw mode, it will copy your drive bit for bit. That includes unused space as well. Now that we've done our backup, we can come back and relaunch the program. We can choose the browse, restore, or copy the files to the drive. If you go ahead and click on browse, you can use the dialog box to locate your, your backup. This is a previous backup I've done. I'm not going to go back through the process today, but this is one that I did back last year. We'll let that process, and I'll come back when it's done. All right, now that we're finished processing the, the image file, uh, this is the Explorer window that it gives us. Uh, the left side is our image file. The right side is just a blown-up version of those files. So we can navigate and locate any stray files that we may, we may want to restore. Uh, this is nice because it allows you to restore individual directories and files without having to reload the entire image. Uh, so say if you just wanted to do a hot image of your operating system, a couple times a year then just be able to restore certain files as you need say whether you had some kind of business or tax record or some kind of emails or important document you wanted to resurrect but you didn't want to go through the whole process of reinstalling the the image now this is a great way to do it I've used this and it's not failed me yet there on the left you can see it gives you some information about how large the image is and whatnot um, next we'll try looking at how to load the entire image Okay, so why would you want to load the entire image to a secondary drive? Alright, so you had two hard drives in your computer, but you wanted to restore the image to the secondary drive so you at least had a workable copy of that so you could swap files to and from or even boot to it. Uh, this would be a great reason to do that. Uh, you simply click Restore, it'll launch the wizard, and select the drive you want to send it to, then click on Next, and it'll walk you right through the process. Um, that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to send them by my blog. Thanks for watching.